بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم Uh, inshallah, this is our last session on uh, Karama, and next session we will talk about the relation <coughs> between Karama and truthfulness. In the last two sessions, we talked about different ways in which we can develop an honorable character the things that can help in gaining that izza and karama, the dignity and honor in ourselves. Or to build it in our students, our children, our trainee. We already mentioned a few things. One of the things which is important is to have a balanced concern about other people's judgments. This is a very delicate issue. In some cultures, people normally don't bother about what other people think about them. Okay, any dress they may, you know, put on and go to street. Anything they may do, any, sometimes, you know, even things that we think it's very impolite, they do it in public because for them it's not important, you know, how other people think about them. Even sometimes for them it's not important how their parents think about them. In front of the parents they can do everything. Even sometimes, you know, they can become naked, you know, in front of parents. They can be naked in front of classmates, you know, I don't know, in public places. So it's not only physical nakedness. In every aspect, they can easily, you know, expose themselves. This is a problem. Of course, this has one advantage despite all its negativity. And then the advantage in such culture, then the people don't much normally show off. Yeah, because other people's opinion is not important for them. So there is no Riyadh that much. Whatever they, ha they are, they are. In other cultures, like our, for example, Eastern culture, which is mixed with Islam, we are not purely Islamic, unfortunately, uh, but there are some similarities. So for us, we have great sense of haya. We have great sense of being careful about the way we appear in the public, in front of family members, parents, or in front of even strangers. We are very careful about these issues. When I want to go somewhere, I always think, what are people going to judge about my dress, about my behavior, about my coming, my going, everything we try to be careful. But then something negative is that in such environment, there is great chance that people then may start showing off. Yeah, because they don't want to be seen by people as someone who is not good or someone who is not polite, someone who is not, you know, I don't know. Wealthy people try to show that they are wealthy, for example, or they try to show that they are good, they are knowledgeable, you know. So, you see, there are advantages and disadvantages. If you don't get it right, you go to one extreme. So, what is the balance? What is the Islamic position? 
should I bother about other people's opinion or not? Of course I should bother. Islamically, we have to be very concerned about our reputation, about people's opinion about us. Yeah? If you can decide about many things in your life, okay? There are many things that you can decide about it. But one of the things that you can never, you know, decide is to sacrifice your honor, your reputation. Okay? You cannot, you know, humiliate yourself and say, it's my reputation, I want to lose it. Yeah? So, even with respect to the places that if you go, or people that if you mix with them, then your honor can be questioned, you have to be careful. Okay? You cannot go to every meeting, every gathering, mix everyone, because then may bring question mark on your personality, on your character. Unless you are a person who wants to go and guide people, that's another issue. You know, like for example, when there is a place that there is epidemic disease, you shouldn't go there and take risk, unless you are a doctor. If you are a doctor, yeah, you go to help and you know how to protect yourself, but even if you endanger your life, it's for saving people's life. Okay? That's good. But if you are not a person who is a doctor or a nurse, why you are taking risk? Some people say, you know, I go and mix with, you know, for example, different people or for the, with the youths who are not practicing and because I want to help them. But then in the process, they themselves are affected. Instead of them changing those people, they are changed by them. So your reputation is very important. Your honor is very important. But there is a balance. To find the balance is very difficult. How much I should care about other people's opinion about me? This is the question. If you don't get the right balance, either you become careless or you are always sad. You are always concerned. Maybe someone didn't like what I said. Maybe someone, you know, didn't approve my behavior, you know. You can always blame yourself. You can always, you know, think negatively about yourself. So, in order to feel that a strength inside, that confidence inside, that honor and dignity inside, this is very important. You have to care for other people's opinion. Otherwise, you may go to wrong direction. You know, Islam talks about Amr ma'roof, nahi and munkar. Why? Because other people's opinion is important. In a society in which other people's opinion is not important, so Amr ma'roof is useless. Yeah? For us, it's very important how other people look at us. But on the other hand, it shouldn't be the main thing. Sometimes people have wrong expectations from you. Sometimes some people can never get happy with you, you know. Imagine if you are a daughter-in-law that you can never, you know, please your in-laws. So this shouldn't make your life, you know, hell. You, you try, but they are never pleased with you. And if you are careless about them, again, you have no happy life with your husband, yeah. So you have to find how much you have to, you know, take into account other people's opinion. So, I think maybe few things can help us here. I cannot, you know, draw a line and say, this is the balanced position. It's difficult, but maybe something uh, can help us by giving some ideas. First of all, a mu'min should be very much concerned about the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judges about him or her. 
This is the main thing for us. Allah is watching us. Alam ya'lam anna Allah yara. So whatever we do, we should do it with understanding that this is done in the presence of Allah and Allah is watching us. And that's for me the main thing. If Allah is happy with me, that means that 60-70% of success has been achieved. I'm saying 60-70% of success because I think great success is when you manage to please Allah and at the same time keep people around happy. Okay? If you just say, I want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't bother about people, this is not right. You have to please Allah and as much as possible, as much as your principles permit, know how to make people also happy. Or at least not to let them be unhappy. Maybe you cannot please them, but at least don't make them angry. So the main thing is to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy. His happiness is the main thing. Okay? Then Rasulullah and Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. Qul'amalu fasayarallahu amalakum wa rasuluhu wal mu'minun. Act. And then soon Allah will see your action, the messenger of Allah and the believers. Uh, I don't have it with me if some, someone can check yeah and we have hadith under this ayah many hadith that our a'mal are presented to the imam of our time on a regular basis this is in addition to his immediate knowledge of whatever is happening okay Whatever we do, whatever we say is known to the Hujja of Allah. But in addition to that, there are formal reports that Imam receives twice a week, according to some hadith. So whatever I do, Imam Zaman is aware. Whatever I think, Imam Zaman is aware. So I should do things that if Imam was standing here, I would have done them. Okay? If there is anything that in front of Imam I'm not able to do, I shouldn't do. This is very important. So we cannot be careless about opinion of Imam. We have to be 100% concerned about the opinion of Imam, about the opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then about the opinion of Mu'minin. Mu'minin are also very important. They are somehow like representative of Imam. Yeah, we don't have always the blessing of checking everything with Imam. But somehow Mu'minin in the community, Mu'minin in the family. Okay? If Mu'minin are happy with me, this is, inshallah, a sign of Allah being happy with me. If mu'minin are not happy with me, of course, mu'minin who are rational, mu'minin who are knowledgeable, mu'minin who are understanding, who are experienced. Not some people who call themselves mu'minin, but they don't have knowledge, and they just follow the customs, you know, or for example, I don't know, superstitious ideas. These are not mu'minin. I mean mu'minin, real mu'minin. Their opinion is very important. In the sense that somehow their opinion can indicate what is haq. Okay? A mu'min can make mistake, two mu'min can make mistake. But if mu'minin as a whole approve something, inshallah there is a sign that this is good thing. Okay? So somehow verification by community of mu'minin can be a sign that this is right thing. Then... After mu'minin, we come to other people. Either family members or friends who are not that high in understanding and taqwa that we look at them as a model or as a kind of hujja. Other people. With other people, we should try 
to act in the way that as much as possible we receive respect from them. A mu'min should behave in the way that he brings honor and respect to himself and to the community. Okay? As much as possible. So even if there are people who have no faith and you are able to please Allah and please them, this is good. If a mu'min can please Allah and at the same time have the arts and the skills that he can also behave in the way that even the people who have no faith love him. This is a sign of success. You now we have some cases you know, about some ulama that when they died, thousands of people you know, in the past, thousands or tens of thousands, now we say millions, but in the past you know, thousands of people, Muslims and non-Muslims, cried over their death. This is a good sign. It means that you were able to behave in the way that even a non-Muslim liked you. You had a life of akhlaq, life of uh, observing rights of people, respecting people. So, if we can manage to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to please Imam Zaman and Mu'mineen, but at the same time please ordinary people, as much as possible, as much as our principles permit, this is a sign of tawfiq. Don't say I, it doesn't matter to me. I don't bother you know, whether they are happy with me or not. This is, akhlaq is not good. As much as possible, you should try to bring love of people towards yourself and towards Ahlul Bayt. Okay? This is very important. But... Don't let their love, their respect, their praise be the criteria for understanding what is right, what is wrong. Because these are not in that level. The level of Allah, the level of Rasulullah, even Mu'minin, as I said, in some way you can say the community of Mu'minin has some authority. Yeah? But other people... We want to make them happy. We don't want. We want to, you know, make them appreciate our life, but we don't want to just please them. You should have clearer access to the truth, to right and wrong than them. You shouldn't follow them. Okay. So this is very important. Some people think that we should just follow the majority, or you know. Uh, follow this uh, famous saying that do in Rome as Romans do. So if you are in London, do as Londoners do. No. If it is just a matter of respecting their customs, okay, but I don't want to do in every town as they do. I have my principles. It's not that whenever I travel, I should become a new person. Yeah? I try to be respectful to every people that I visit. I try to observe the laws of every land that I visit as much as my principles permit. And I sure, I'm sure they also would do the same if they are wise and rational people. It's not that they change their personality and akhlaq when they travel. They would also keep their heritage. They keep their principles with them. So here we have then to find the fine line of how to act in the way that we please them, but at the same time not to feel very sad or very disappointed if you don't receive proper appreciation. My family members, no matter how much I try to please them, they are not pleased with me. My, I don't know, classmates, my neighbors, my colleagues, my fellow citizens. So, I think here we should say that if I am pleasing Allah, if I am following my principles and I have really done my best, then I shouldn't bother that much about other people's opinion in this situation, not always, in this situation. Don't let other people's opinion about you make your life you know, sad. If you have done everything right, 
And also you have been a person who has been careful about pleasing other people as much as possible. It's not that you are a stubborn person, you are you know, a disrespectful person. But in the end of the day, you cannot please everyone. What is important is you have tried to please Allah, you have tried to please Imam, you have tried to please Mubin, you have tried to please people who have reasonable expectations from you. So this is very important that we build in ourselves and in our children and our trainees respect for others, concern about other people's opinion, but in this hierarchy that I explained. Otherwise, either they become very careless people, and you know, we have hadith which says that. Uh, I think it says Sharon Nas, if I'm not mistaken, you know, worst uh, of people, something like this, are those who don't bother about what is being said about them. You know, there are people that, even if people say bad words about them, they don't bother. Even, you know, in some cultures, there are some people that actually to tell them bad words make them happy. I don't know if you have seen some of the people, you know, like this. Yes. They have always to say bad words and hear bad words. So if you say, you know, could you please, you know, tell me, they don't like this. You have to say something bad to them, they enjoy. So <laughs> Hadith says worst type of people are the people who don't care about what is being said to them and about them. And maybe the worst than them are the people who like bad things to be said to them. So... This is what I wanted to say as a continuity of our discussion. And finally, maybe this would be my last point, is deep connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want to be filled with honor and dignity, why you don't connect yourself to the source of dignity and honor. <laughs> if I can connect myself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if I can connect my children, my students to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and teach them and teach myself how to have a life which is full of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I would have a strength. I would feel very powerful. I would feel very rich. I would feel that I am not an orphan. I'm not a stranger in this world. You know, sometimes I think I told you that we don't understand how much people who lack faith, either they don't have faith at all or they don't have real faith. Okay? Because there are believers who really don't believe. Okay? We don't know how much these people suffer. You know, if you have always had your parents, you don't understand the pain of orphans. We try to imagine, but you can never imagine what does it mean to be an orphan. When a day is, you know, finishing and everyone goes to his home and you are orphan you have no one to go to or when you have problem and you don't have father or mother to go and tell your problem yeah how much you suffer as orphan so there are people in this world who are really orphan because they don't believe in god okay no matter how much we suffer but we know that everything is in hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is watching us. He is aware. And whenever needed, he comes and intervenes. Okay? For example, you know, if you are, uh, maybe this example is a good example. Imagine if you are wrestling. Okay? You are wrestling and then you see that your father, your brothers, your cousins, all are around the mattress. 
okay? You know that during the game, they don't interfere. Yeah? But the fact that you see them around gives you sukun. That if this Baba is going to be cruel to me, they will come and help me. Okay? This dunya is a game. And Allah is watching us. Maybe he doesn't come into the game every time that we want. But I'm sure that he is there. Okay? It gives me confidence. But these people who are faceless, they are orphans. So the life for them is miserable. And even... I think the people who are faceless, they cannot that much also trust other people. Because, you know, imagine if there is no God, there is no Akhirah, nothing. Why people should, you know, be always good with me? Anytime they can change. So, the people who lack God, it's very difficult for them to feel confident. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm not saying that they would be not dignified people. But I say it's very difficult for them. They are deprived from a great source of strength. So if we manage to connect ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presence in our life very clear, if we give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an active role in our life, then we would be able to have that dignified character easier. I'm not saying it's impossible without God because we expect even people who have no faith to be honorable, to be hor. Yeah? But it's very difficult for them. For believers, it should be much easier. So, this is the last point I wanted to mention. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alam.